Hey, it's time for a special edition of VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk, and we're going to do a interface shootout. We've been wanting to do this for a while, right, George? Yeah, we really have. This is a big thing to put together because you got to first gather all these things. And fortunately, between Dan and I, we got a lot of interfaces we've gathered over the years. Dan has them spread out all over the floor, so hopefully you'll see a picture of that later. Um, there's a lot of gear here. So we're, we're ranging uh, basically spanning a decade, right? Probably more than that. Some of the stuff I've had for a while. Yeah. So if you want to see what they sound like, stay tuned. Coming up on VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk. From the outer reaches, they came. Bearing the knowledge of what it takes to properly record your voiceover audio. And together, from the center of the VO universe, they bring it to you now. George Whittem, the engineer to the VO stars, a Virginia Tech grad with the skills to build, set up, and maintain the professional VO studios of the biggest names in VO today. And you, Dan Leonard, the voiceover home studio master, a professional voice talent with the knowledge and experience to help you create a professional sounding home VO studio. And each week, they allow you into their world, making the complex simple, debunking the myths of what it takes to create great sounding audio, answering your questions, showing you the latest and greatest in VO tech, and having a dandy time doing it. Welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk. VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products, Source Elements, remote studio connections for everyone, VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website isn't a pain in the butt, VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training, J. Michael Collins Demos, when quality matters, and VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live to drive from their super secret clubhouse and studio in Sherman Oaks, California. Here are the guys. Well, hi there. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver Body Shop or VO BS. Tech Talk, Tech Talk, Special Edition. <laughs> Well, only okay. Adobe After Effects graphics. <laughs> yeah, we'll throw those in there. Anyway, uh, you know, we're off for a week, so we thought, what a great time to actually do an interface shootout because we've got so many of these things. And uh, I had most of them, but then George had a few more, so I had to get in the car, bring him some falafel, and drive all the way to Topanga Canyon and make sure that we had enough interfaces to do. We've got like nine or ten here, I think. Yeah, let's. I'll, I'll just read down the wave files. That'll remind me what we have. So okay, that'll help. Starting at the top of the list, and this is in no particular order, the newest thing in this test for sure would be the Audient Evo 4. We have a Rode AI-1 a uh, Scarlet 2i2 gener Generation 2, and a, an Apogee 1, and I believe that is literally the first Gen 1, right? The old yes. black one. Yes, sounds great. Um, the Audient ID14, the Sentrance MicPort Pro 2, uh, an Avid MBOX 3 Mini, which used to be mine, and it's got to be 10 years old. The MicPort Pro 1, or the original Gen, yeah, there's the there's the avid um a focus right solo gen one a sentence mixer face r4 an apollo twin mark one that's the silver one um, a steinberg ur12 and actually i think that's it that rounds out the list it's a heck of it's a heck of an array of stuff so where do we start should we, we you you did this cool mix and match file where we get to hear all of them intercut and then yeah, we but, have samples of all of them. Where, where should we start? Well, I say we go through each one of them. But first, I think we need to tell people, if they're fairly new to watching our show, what it is that George and I do, which is, you know, we help people with their home voiceover studios. And the fact that so many people now need to have a home voiceover studio because you can't go into the big professional studios. 
uh, that everybody needs help. And boy, if we've been getting lots of interesting emails and requests and files from people, uh, everybody's just like, well, I just heard from this person that, you know, uh, foam is just for decoration, that you should really use fiberglass. And it's like, oh, come on now. Said someone is FOS. And, you know, if you're going to ask us, we know the answers because George and I have been doing this for a combined at least 30 years. So you're talking to people who have worked with the top people in the business. We have built literally hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of home voiceover studios. And this is what we do. We don't, we're not specialists in one studio, our own, especially mine, since I'm actually a voice actor and George works with all the top voice actors. And, and I work with all, a lot of the top voice actors and their, their audio should sound fabulous. But people get confused as to what they're supposed to use. Yeah, and they get recommended tools that don't work well for them or are so, so complicated, they don't even know what's going on under the hood and why the audio doesn't sound the way they think it should. So right. that's our job is to sort all that out. Right. So if people want to work with you, George, with you, George, with you, George, I'm the Jew Dan. I, you're, the, you're George. How do they work with you? Uh, you can head over to George the dot tech. That's the website where all my services are located. Um, I've got on demand stuff where uh, you can schedule one on one sessions or there's like a self service list of options in there, like getting a sound check or having your to your, like a tutorial or a stack for your auditions. And Dan, you're also providing services on your website. Oh, yeah. We just go over to homevoiceoverstudio.com and uh, check out what I do. And we're always offering some new stuff. There's lots of videos there. But I talk about what it is you need to do for a home studio and what you're using it for. And if you already have one built and you're recording and you want to hear what your audio I mean, you know what it sounds like, but you may not really understand what it sounds like. I've got my specimen collection cup, and all you do is click on that, follow the instructions, send me a, uh, a file. Mm -hmm. According to my instructions means raw. Follow the instructions. Follow means. the instructions. And uh, for $25, I will give you a very thorough analysis of what is going on in your studio. If it sounds good, it is good. Right. If it doesn't, We'll tell you why, and if you need a little bit more help, we can set that up with a consultation. But let's get into the meat of the matter here on VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk Interface Shootout. 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 <laughs> Should have some fun with that. Anyway, uh, let's let's start off with uh, what what's the first file you've got there? In the oh, queue? yeah, just looking again at the list that I have in front of me. The first file I have is the, the Evo 4 which is one that we've both looked at. I did a review on this. And so this is our first close, really close listen to this thing to see what it sounds like. So Dan, also tell everybody about the parameters that you were following to make sure that these, this test was, you know, as accurate as we could do. So you were, you were using what mic? Uh, well, I'm using a Sennheiser 460. Well, better yet. Why don't I just roll this video of the rules? Okay. Here's the rules. I've got my 416, 30 degrees towards my chest, seven to eight inches away. I measured this is seven to eight inches. I'm going to be using different interfaces. I'm going to change them between each copy and uh, we'll read this standard script. Companies can no longer afford to be reactive. Across all industries, organizations rely on the uptime of their equipment to be as productive and reliable as possible. As systems age, predictive maintenance efforts need to be kept up to date. Today, new technologies have become available, allowing organizations to become more proactive than ever before in their reliability journeys. All right, let's take a listen to this Evo 4 sample. Companies can no longer afford to be reactive. Across all industries, Organizations rely on the uptime of their equipment to be as productive and reliable as possible. As systems age, predictive maintenance efforts need to be kept up to date. Today, new technologies have become available, allowing organizations to become more proactive than ever before in their reliability journeys. Now, Dan, you have a second sample. Is there anything different between the two? or is it? No, no, no. That, that's just an alternate take. So we'll go with that one. Okay. Your thoughts? 
Sounds good. And I think you're going to hear that a lot tonight. When you hear these things <laughs> sort of in a vacuum or kind of alone, you know, we're listening to them one after another soloed like this. You're going to find it very hard to differentiate between them as to what sounds better. So I'll play each of these samples down the line. And then what I might do is kind of more rapidly switch between them or just play your mix and match sample where you've intercut between a whole bunch of different interfaces and just made a cut of the way they all sound next to each other so we'll do, do that a little later on yeah yeah so, so that I, yeah the evo 4 i liked it you know it's you know compared to the id 14 which we'll hear a little bit later it's a totally different generation of an audience interface and you know it's simple i mean here it is you're actually listening to me on it right now because that's what i'm using to record uh and uh it's it's kind of cool and it's uh it's it's a good clean sounding interface. So I do you like I'm the really game? Happy. Do you like the knob on it? The way the game yeah, works. It, once you learn how it all works, yeah, it's kind of cool. And it also has a feature on it where you can set the set a level that's an automatic level setting, which I think is probably a, a really cool thing to have. Yeah, what to do? Sets it at minus ten peak or something? I'm not something sure what like it does. That. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, so that's Evo 4. We'll jump on to the next thing in the list again. Arbitrary order. This is the Rode AI One. So another. Pretty modern, new design, came out in the last couple of years. And uh, let's see what that sounds like. Companies can no longer afford to be reactive. Across all industries, organizations rely on the uptime of their equipment to be as productive and reliable as possible. As systems age, predictive maintenance efforts need to be kept up to date. Today, new technologies have become available allowing organizations to become more proactive than ever before in their reliability journeys. I think that one sounds great. Like a little bit better than the Evo 4. I mean, it's, it's subtle, but there's just something about the detail, like the top end detail, just something about it. It just seems a little bit crisper. But anyway, yeah, I mean, sounds darn good. I'm 63 years old. I've listened to too much rock music, but to tell you the truth, they sounded pretty much the same to me. Yeah, they're you know? really close. Yeah. I mean, it, it is, is that going to be a big difference, though? Is that something that is going to make the difference between you booking a job and not booking a job? Well, we'll play that mix and match later, and, and you're going to hear, when you intercut these together, how subtle it is. It's, it's uh, again, playing them by themselves, it's harder to tell. Um, let's jump now back a little bit in generation to a Focusrite 2i2 Gen 2. So this is a couple of years old. And let's see how this stacks up. And again, all of these look like their peak levels are pretty well matched. So oh, they the are. Trust me. Are, we're in good shape there. Companies can no longer afford to be reactive. Across all industries, organizations rely on the uptime of their equipment to be as productive and reliable as possible. As systems age, predictive maintenance efforts need to be kept up to date. Today, new technologies have become available, allowing organizations to become more proactive than ever before in their reliability journeys. Sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> and if it sounds good, it is good. <laughs> You're probably not going to hear us say this sounds bad tonight. I can guarantee it. There's, we've already heard all these, and there's not a bad one in the bunch. They're just. Shades of mauve, I like to call shades it. Shades of mauve, yeah. <laughs> Not a shade of chartreuse, but a shade of mauve. <laughs> right. And uh, so yeah. that was the the Gen Two Scarlet. It's, it's obviously one of the most common, most popular interfaces on the planet. Yeah, I. It really comes down to the fact that they all do essentially the same thing. They turn our analog audio from our microphones to the ones and zeros that our computers understand it can turn into a graphic representation of a waveform and a spectrograph and all the other things that we do. Uh, so it's really important that people understand that, is there a huge difference in these? Clearly, clearly there's something, and it probably has more to do with the preamps in them than in the actual converter. You know, analog to digital converters inside the uh, the units, but we yeah, can you talk about that. Have, you basically have two main components in these things doing the job: the preamp circuit and the converter, the analog, the digital chip. And uh, honestly, there's only a couple of companies that make these parts. So in many cases, they they may have exactly the same parts in terms of the 
preamp or and or the chip and the converter. So, you know, anyway, take that. Now, at the Apogee, they're kind of known for their converters. This is Absolutely. what they've been, always been known for. So let's listen to the Apogee One. This is the original Apogee One. This thing has got to be at least 10 years old. The little right. black one with the funky cable on it. Right. And I've got a good story after we do this one. So Companies can no longer afford to be reactive. Across all industries, organizations rely on the uptime of their equipment to be as productive and reliable as possible. As systems age, predictive maintenance efforts need to be kept up to date. Today, new technologies have become available, allowing organizations to become more proactive than ever before in their reliability journeys. It sounds great. I mean, it sounds as good as anything else that we've heard so far, if not the best. It has that same detail that I was talking about, that very top end detail, that just sounds really, really clean and nice like the road. Um, yeah. Here's the thing, I, the Apogee one, well, I have a love hate. Great sound, <laughs> but I don't like their driver software maestro panel thing, it's confusing. They have a funky breakout cable that's proprietary. I've never been a big fan of the design, but the sound quality speaks for itself. Yeah, and the so, thing is, yeah. I didn't I didn't use the Maestro on that. I, I was just plugged you don't in need and, it. and rolled. Yeah, you generally it. don't need it. The Maestro thing is only for people that really got to hear themselves on their headphones. Right. And then they, then you need that for that. But it's, yeah, I've always found them to be a little fiddly. Yeah. Nothing like an actual knob on the front of the unit to turn the gain up and down, you know? Yeah, and it's a very functional knob, too. Big silver knob. Push it in. It allows you to change inputs and things like that. About... This had to have been probably 10 or 11 years ago. Let's see. It was probably at the second uh, voice conference at the, uh, the uh, Century City Plaza Hotel in probably 2010. So, yeah, at least, at least 10 years ago. Uh, I got to meet the president or vice president of Epigee, which is they're in Santa Monica. So they you know, like, oh, we'll just go over there and check it out. And and I, I was listening to it. I'm like, I have one of these, and I really like it. He goes, "Do you use a preamp with it?" And I said, "And at the time, I had it. I have a. I, I still have it. it. It's sitting on a shelf. A, a Personas Eureka, which was great. The reason I used it is because it was a. Um, it had a a SPDIF digital output that we could use as an optical input into a Mac. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's like, "What do you need that for? Go naked." And I'm like, excuse me? Uh, he says, go naked with it. It's like, just go direct into the Epigee from your mic because... He was saying, trust the preamp. Trust, trust the, the preamp trust in, the, in the Epigee because yeah. we've, we spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on research on these things. And it'll sound great. And so, and I did one of the biggest projects I ever did using an Epigee one, which was an entire English translation of the Old Testament, uh, which was about a six month operation. And uh, we used that one and it was flawless the whole way through. There was nothing. It was just dry as a bone. It went right into that. And the Epigee one was great. You know, easy to set a level with it and easy to travel with if you're one of those people that obsesses about moving about with your interface. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it was it was a nice unit. It, it dates way back. I mean, I was looking online while you were talking about trying to figure out when it came out. The, the generation after that one, the next one, came out in 2009. Yeah. So that gives you, this thing has been out for well over 10, maybe 12 plus years. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, I telling you, they, they, I've been saying this all along that we've pretty much nailed the, the interface AV converter sound quality problem already. Like, yeah. we did that a long time ago. So anything coming out, it's just variations on a theme with different branding, different prices, different knobs, but right. the sound quality is there. Yeah. And I'd still be using it, except I gave it away to somebody. And I went, well, I want to try this one. I, and I was using two I2s and I've been using a bunch of other things. And, you know, and of course, this is all proving that does it really matter? Right. So anyway, but also the, 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 the amount of gain that thing has without any hissing or any white noise or anything, it's just a really, really clean little preamp for just a little tiny thing. Yeah, it does have a lot of gain. Yeah. Yeah. So now jumping back to audience, this is the ID14, which has been a pretty well-respected unit for quite some time. Let's see how this one sounds. 
Companies can no longer afford to be reactive. Across all industries, organizations rely on the uptime of their equipment to be as productive and reliable as possible. As systems age, predictive maintenance efforts need to be kept up to date. Today, new technologies have become available, allowing organizations to become more proactive than ever before in their reliability journeys. It sounds good. It sounds good. We've had a lot of good sounding interfaces, but it doesn't sound great. Do you think well, it's, it sounds, I mean, it doesn't have that something that the Apogee did on the top end. It's, 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 I guess it's, you want to say muddy, but it's not really it's muddy. It's not muddy. It just doesn't quite have, I keep using this detail or articulate. Yeah. It's basically the top, top end of the frequency range. There's just something not quite there. I think it'd be interesting to hear back to back against its suitor the, or the newer suitor is maybe not the right word, but it's kind of the next gen audience thing, the Evo, Evo 4. Well, we've, we've so, heard the Evo 4, so we know yeah, what it So like. let's yeah. listen to it right back to back. So here's the Evo 4. Companies can no longer afford to be reactive. Across all industries, organizations rely on the uptime of their equipment to be as productive and reliable as possible. Now back to the ID14. Companies can no longer afford to be reactive. That's interesting. The Evo 4 is a little darker even then the ID14. Yeah. So they're, they, are, they definitely have a different sound from each other. Yeah. All right. So moving what's, on. What's the next one on the hit parade? Yeah. The next one, it says it is the MPP02. So that must be the Micport Pro, Pro 2. Two. We had an issue with this one, but let's, let's hear it. All right. Here we go. Companies can no longer afford to be reactive. Across all industries, organizations rely on the uptime of their equipment to be as productive and reliable as possible. As systems age, predictive maintenance efforts need to be kept up to date. Today, new technologies have become available, allowing organizations to become more proactive than ever before in their reliability journeys. Good. It sounds really good. It was actually pretty crisp. Uh, crisp, detailed. Yeah. Yeah. All yeah. That. It, Tell me about fun. the issues you had while getting it, getting it working. Well, I was I was working with it, and I started doing another take, and it just crapped out on me. I was like, "No, it's not. Let's not. You know, we don't we don't recognize it anymore. Stop it." You know, and I like yeah. I tried to get it to go again. Try you know, unplugged it, plugged it back in, and it stopped working on me. Mm -hmm. So that was that was one of the initial takes because I did a couple of takes. You know, the first takes we did, uh, I was sort of varying the read a little bit, and it changed. Gotcha. A lot of things. So I tried to do the read as consistently as possible, which is why it doesn't sound like, you know, you know, some really professional voice. Actor. It's as close to apples to apples to apples as you can get. Exactly. Yeah, it's exactly. really consistent. Yeah. I, I did. Did the battery die? Because that's the quirk about that thing. It has a no, battery. It, in it. it was plugged in. Okay. I had I had it plugged in, and then it just suddenly just lost content. We've seen that before. Uh -huh. I remember we we were doing a a, a mic shootout at uh, Wovocon a couple of years ago using a um, a mixer a Behringer mixer and it just died on us. We're like now what? <laughs> so fortunately we had a backup, which is well, what let's, we do. Let's jump to its much older brother sibling, the Centrance Micport Pro. Which okay, kind of was like the one that started it all in terms of ultra portable, high quality interfaces these things are definitely way north of 10 years old now yeah uh, here we go companies can no longer afford to be reactive across all industries organizations rely on the uptime of their equipment to be as productive and reliable as possible as systems age predictive maintenance efforts need to be kept up to date today New technologies have become available, allowing organizations to become more proactive than ever before in their reliability journeys. They're really similar sounding, right? I mean, <laughs> they're pretty much identical. So anyway, Centrance, you know, they said that they designed a new preamp and everything for it, but fortunately they didn't mess with the Sonics. It sounds fantastic. Right. So if yeah. you like the extra flexibility of the Micport Pro 2, the extra features it has, the battery for plugging into an ipad um probably the way to go i don't even know are they still selling the mic port pro first i, I don't i do not i do not know probably not, not right probably not um, right yeah yeah now what's oh, good go all right i i figured maybe it's time to go to the mixer face since we're on the centrance products so we'll see the we're on the centrance uh chain yeah let's go yeah. to the mixer face so the mixer face came out um 
uh, before the MicPort Pro 2. It's kind of like the MicPort Pro doubled. It's like two of them. Uh, it's stereo. So let's take a listen to that one. Companies can no longer afford to be reactive. Across all industries, organizations rely on the uptime of their equipment to be as productive and reliable as possible. As systems age, predictive maintenance efforts need to be kept up to date. Today, new technologies have become available, allowing organizations to become more proactive than ever before in their reliability journeys. Essentially the same yeah, as you would expect. Yeah, well, actually, to me, sounded a little bit more transparent. Interesting, yeah. Yeah. I could see that, yeah. It, yeah, they're, they're all, they all compare very, very favorably or similarly between all the sensor and smarts, which, you know, is good. That's actually a good sign because that means that Michael Goodman, the, the, the designer of these, is listening to them and making sure that that sound quality carries on from product to product, generation to generation. Absolutely. So um, now we're going to jump back in time. And we skipped over. We're going to go back to the Avid Mbox 3 Mini. Okay. This thing is uh, got to be 10 years old, at least. So this is kind of an older generation. Now, granted, they had a couple different versions before this. This is the 3. Here's the original. The original Mbox. Signed by? Signed by Melissa Disney. <laughs> <laughs> and the reason it's not in the test is because it's 32-bit, and none of our computers can even support it. There's no functioning drivers that will work on it, so we couldn't test it. But anyway, here we go, Mbox 3. Companies can no longer afford to be reactive. Across all industries, organizations rely on the uptime of their equipment to be as productive and reliable as possible. As systems age, predictive maintenance efforts need to be kept up to date. Today, new technologies have become available, allowing organizations to become more proactive than ever before in their reliability journeys. No complaints there. Sounds fantastic. Sounds 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 really good. I'm, sounds I'm great. Sure. Yeah, I interesting to note that you know I picked that particular copy, so I could do that one last sentence on one breath. It's amazing how many times people, you know, they 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 try it because they're trying to project too much. Mm. They tend to take a breath in the middle of a sentence, like, well, how do I edit out the breaths? How about not taking one? Right. Uh, so if you can do an entire lengthy sentence in one breath, that's going to save you a lot of time and a lot of uh, editing time. So yeah. I figured I'd just throw that in there for for Yeah, you know, for no, that's sake. a very good point. Yeah. So now we're going to go back to the Focusrite Scarlet Solo Gen 1. So but going before, back. Right. But before we do that, we're going to take a break. because Oh, we, it's break time. It's break time. So go grab a soda or whatever it is, your favorite beverage, and listen to these incredible messages from our incredibly important sponsors. We'll be right back here on VoiceOver Body Shop. Tech Talk Interface Shootout. 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 This is the Latin lover narrator from Jane the Virgin, Anthony Mendez, and you're enjoying Dan and George on the VoiceOver Body Shop. Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big-voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? This is Virgin Radio. Well, okay, we're not that innocent. There's jeans for wearing and there's jeans for working. Dickies, because I ain't here to look pretty. She's a champion of progressive values, a leader for California, and a voice for America. It's smart. It's a phone. It's a smartphone. But it's so much more. It's a, the files are ready. Don't forget to pick up the eggs. What time is hockey practice? Check out this song. It's the end of the road for Rick. It's just you and me, Rick. When hope is lost. The I-8 from BMW. Who said saving the planet couldn't be stylish? Hey, it's J. Michael Collins. Bet you think I'm going to try and sell you a demo now, huh? I think they speak for themselves. But I will give you my email. It's jmichael at jmcvoiceover.com. Now, if Dan will stop waxing his mustache for a minute, we'll get back to the show. I know what you've likely heard is that voicing, editing, and mastering audiobooks is grueling. It takes forever, and it's hard to do. The tech you need is incredibly finicky. But what if I told you it doesn't have to be that way? The hundreds and hundreds of graduates of the ACX Masterclass know that it doesn't have to be a slog to produce an audiobook. If you have the right training, the right tools, and the right mindset, it can be with David H. Lawrence the 17th, who is your trainer and tool whisperer for the ACX Masterclass, describes as a lovely, satisfying, 
and profitable part of your voiceover practice. With audiobooks being the lowest hanging fruit of the voiceover world, the ACX Masterclass will show you exactly how you can make that happen. And right now, if you go to acxmasterclass.com, you'll find a free mini course with three full video lessons that will bring into laser focus just how easy making audiobook narration a part of your voiceover career can be. That's acxmasterclass.com. Hey, everybody. It's time to talk about Source Connect. That's that software you've probably heard about created by Source Elements. And it's used for connecting your studio to other studios and producers and engineers all around the world. And now, especially at home, um, a lot of studio engineers are now recording sessions live. And not just what you might normally think of as Source Connect sessions, like big uh, commercial gigs, but they're doing even audiobooks. Uh, they're doing animation. All sorts of different projects are being recorded over Source Connect. It's a software you run on your computer. It's an application that runs on Mac or Windows. And uh, in order to use it, there's a little bit of a process to get it set up. If you head over to georgethe.tech slash sc, you can get some free tutorial information over there to get you up and running a little bit faster um, that I've put together. But get a trial license of Source Connect now. Uh, not Source Connect now, and that's why I said that. It's a play on words, Source Connect standard. Source Connect Standard is the tool that's being used by the pros. So if you want to get that up and running, head over to source-elements.com, get a 15-day free trial, get your iLock set up, and get it going so that you're ready and you can tell your agent and you can tell your clients, I am Source Connect ready. I'm ready to go. And that's what you should do. You should be ready. Be ready and make sure you have Source Connect. We'll be right back. Yeah, hi, this is Carlos Ellis Rocky, the voice of Rocco, and you're watching Voice Over Body Shop. We're back. We are, and we're doing an interface shoot out here on Voice Over Body Shop, and uh, yeah, I, I'm going to have to do a film of all the stuff. I'll show this in a second. I'll... <laughs> Here's a video of all the garbage that's been going on here. I mean, We've not really been in the, st I'm the only one that's been in the studio for the last couple of weeks since we were all on quarantine lockdown here. And we've been doing the show remotely. And as we see, we're sort of doing it remotely this way today, this week. And uh, so it only, ha it only has to look nice in the frame of the camera. <laughs> see, it looks fabulous. I could be in Carnegie Hall here for all you know. It's It looks great. But anyway. All right. So what's next on the hit parade here? Uh, we got the Focusrite Scarlet Solo. Jennifer, Jennifer, <laughs> Jen Jennifer one, <laughs> Jennifer one. It's the focus, right? Scarlet gen one, the original Scarlet solo. Companies can no longer afford to be reactive across all industries. Organizations rely on the uptime of their equipment to be as productive and reliable as possible. As systems age, predictive maintenance efforts need to be kept up to date. Today, new technologies have become available, allowing organizations to become more proactive than ever before in their reliability journeys. You know, it sounds fantastic. I got no complaints about the Gen 1, and that's, you know, the first that's, Gen. That's a, that's a Focusrite solo. 100 bucks. Yeah. I mean, now, we used to use that on the show. That was our, our monitor here when, when our Sue, our director, was using that for the output for her headphones, and then it lost a channel in the headphone section. Right, you, right. If you pushed on the dial, it would you'd get it, but she's not going to spend the entire time directing the show holding that button in. So, <laughs> so it got but tired, but it, it got still re records. It still records just great. Yeah. So here's, now we're going to really mix it up. So we're going to go from that hundred dollar interface to the most expensive by far interface on the whole test. This is now the Apollo twin Mark one. So uh, I don't have a twin Mark two on hand or the arrow, any of the new stuff. This is the Mark One. It came out maybe four or five years ago. So here we go with the Mark One Apollo. Companies can no longer afford to be reactive. Across all industries, organizations rely on the uptime of their equipment to be as productive and reliable as possible. As systems age, predictive maintenance efforts need to be kept up to date. Today, new technologies have become available, allowing organizations to become more proactive than ever before in their reliability journeys. I mean, as you would expect, it sounds good, great. It's it's in the same class sound-wise as the all the best stuff in the right. test. 
But here's the question. That is an $800 interface versus 150 for some of these other ones, or 200 or so. Is it worth that $600 more to get that sound quality? Really, what is it the difference between the Apollo Twin and all these other guys? And that has a lot more to do with features that it allows you to, for stuff, the stuff that I personally object to, which bells is and whistles. bells and whistles and front end processing. Because when you record stuff on the front end, it's there forever. That's right. And, and if you really don't understand what it is that you are doing, and trust me, I've gotten a lot of samples in the last couple of days and weeks of people like, I don't really know what I'm doing. You know, sort of the old doctor, it hurts when I do that. Well, don't do that for crying out loud. Um, you, also, you, yeah, go ahead. You're recording oftentimes in your home, and the noise floor of your home ain't all that great most of the time. If you're lucky enough to have an actual separate home studio building like Dan, then that's a different story. And that's why Dan did this shootout. He's got a really, really quiet space. I don't. But if you don't have an amazingly quiet space, the differences in the noise floor or little subtle things, never going to hear them. The problems you're going to hear are far more likely going to be caused by bad mic placement, bad acoustics, noise from the environment, noise from the microphone, all these other things. So yeah, these, these differences, that's why they're so subtle. They yeah. really don't make a big difference. Right. What the Apollo Twin has and what the, most of the, the Universal products have is the, the ability to throw plugins in and really adjust the sound for what it was designed for, which is recording music performances it's 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 and you know and we talked about this a couple of weeks ago if you're on microphone singing you're throwing out a lot of what they like to call spl uh sound pressure levels you a, a good studio condenser mic is going to be able to handle that if you pot it down and you're going to get the right modulation and it's going to catch you really really well mm -hmm. voiceover is a lot more subtle because in reality, we're just trying to talk like, as I tell a lot of people, like you're sitting in the theater with your spouse or significant other or whoever. And when you're in the theater before the curtain goes up, I mean, you're hearing people. <laughs> Primarily, you're using your indoor voice because you don't turn to your spouse or friend or significant other and go, I think I left my keys in the car. And if you do do that, <laughs> you better go have your hearing checked. Exactly. So it's like. You know, it's more like, I think I left my keys in the car. And that's the read that you're hearing a lot of that casting directors are looking for. So if if you're, you're trying to record and capture you as you exist, and when you add all of these plugins and all this stuff in, somebody sent me a screenshot of all they're using. I'm like, oh, my God, what are you doing? People are creating these control rooms for nuclear reactors to control that hamster running in a wheel. And it's like, don't you don't need this stuff. You're trying to sound as natural as possible. Now, the Apollo Twin sounds great. Nice, crisp, transparent and all that stuff. But so do these other guys. So yeah. what, what the big difference in cost there is really the ability to add all this other stuff that's none of your business. Well, the other problem, I mean, I, I, and there are scenarios that it's helpful, and I have set up processing for people that do a lot of uh, radio or TV affiliate things, things where they have to turn stuff around really, really quick. Right. And it has to sound ready for air right out of the system. That's a whole different story and a very unique niche. Most everybody else, the audio needs to be clean and as it's recorded with nothing added. The thing is, the other thing that comes along with these much more complicated units like the Apollo is the support ongoingly for updates, bug fixes, um, weird glitches with the hardware and software, the firmware, all those things add so many more variables. And trust me, I've been dealing a lot lately with Universal Audio Apollos not being so, uh, let's should we say, consistent. There's been quite a few problems with them lately. So uh, long story short, Stick with the simple stuff. And yeah. speaking of simple stuff, this is the simplest one and in, in probably in this test or tied for simplest. And this is the Steinberg UR12. Here we go. Companies can no longer afford to be reactive. Across all industries, organizations rely on the uptime of their equipment to be as productive and reliable as possible. 
As systems age, predictive maintenance efforts need to be kept up to date. Today, new technologies have become available, allowing organizations to become more proactive than ever before in their reliability journeys. We just went from $800 to $100, sometimes $79 on Amazon, depending on when you look. If you look hard enough, yeah. Yeah, uh, go ahead. You, you uh, can, give me your impressions of that. <laughs> it still sounds great. I mean, I'm when you, it's very hard to tell the differences when you're hearing them. You know, we're playing something, talking, playing something else, talking. So in doing so, it's harder to hear those little subtle differences until you really back to back play them. But I'm that Steinberg, which not only does it functionally function fine, it also has this loopback thing, which most of this other gear doesn't have. And if it does have it, like the Apollo, it's so frustratingly complicated to set it up that unless you pay me to set it up, you'll probably never figure out how to do it. The Apollo, I mean the the Steinberg has a built in. It's just a little checkbox in the driver. It's just an amazingly good value, great sound quality. Yeah. Now, you know, we're using a great, great microphone with all this gear. So same some mic. of the yeah, same mic. Some of your lower, lower quality or lower output microphones, say like for example, like a dynamic microphone, the differences between these might become a little more apparent, especially how much gain they're able to put out. So it does depend on a lot on the kind of mic you're using, but we're using the Sennheiser 416 because it's one of the most common voiceover mics in the biz. It's one that most everybody is familiar with, and it sounds great. Yeah. So yeah. should we play the mix and mac? Well, I was going to say with the UR12, to me, and again, I'm ancient history, but it seemed just a hair darker mm -hmm. than, say, say, the Apollo Twin, which sounded pretty good, but it sounded great. Yeah. So yeah. I go back to the shades of mauve. You know where yeah. that shades of mauve thing came from? I mean, I don't somewhere. even know what the color mauve is. But in the movie Lost in Translation, yeah, the character, the lead character, is sitting in his office. His wife FedEx him, or in his hotel room, the wife right. FedEx him a box of carpet swatches for the office right. that they are right. remodeling, and it's a box full of probably like garnet colored fabric. Yeah, and she's like, "Which one do you like the most?" And he's looking at all these samples, and they're almost all exactly the same. Right. And he's like, "I don't know, honey, pick one." That's yeah. kind of how it is with this stuff. The color shade, the tonal difference from one to next is really yeah. subtle. This this is mauve. This color right here on this flower here. So, if you <laughs> if you wonder, great movie with Bill Murray and Scarlett Johansson. By oh, the way. it's great. So, uh, you know, a real breakout movie for both of them. Actually, not that Bill Murray needed a breakout movie, but no, but it really set set him in a different category. I think. It it really did. He's like, well, he's actually like a legitimate actor. It's, yeah, it's actually kind of cool. So uh, yeah. Also, but I was also going to comment on the Apollo Twin uh, earlier that it was not easy to set up the software for that. A huge download, <laughs> isn't it? It's like, uh, <laughs> uh, and I, and I, I give my name, address, uh, my name of my firstborn, and you know, log but, in, but and I, create the account. Yeah, but I got it working, so who cares? Yeah, no, it was a huge, huge download just to install that thing. Yeah, you know, so it's a big, it's a big deal. Yeah. So, so tell me about your mix and match file because this, I think, is maybe the most interesting thing of all. Well, I did a bunch of these, but this is this is the last one I did. It's mix and match number four. Uh, the thing about this was, is I, I didn't guess when we were exchanging these files this week, it's like, okay, well, this one's this one, this one, this, this last one, I didn't give you that. It's like, we don't know what each one of these is or where I did an edit to put it together. So play the file. This is, this is, I call this mix and match. This is the same script using a lot of different interfaces you tell me if I submitted this as an audition, would an engineer be able to tell? All right, let's play this one. And this is also a great demo of how good good editing sounds. It doesn't sound edited. God, I hope so. Take a listen. Companies can no longer afford to be reactive. Across all industries, organizations rely on the uptime of their equipment to be as productive and reliable as possible. As systems age, predictive maintenance efforts need to be kept up to date. Today, new technologies have become available, allowing organizations to become more proactive than ever before in their reliability journeys. Now, that was interesting. That was eight different interfaces. 
eight <laughs> eight different interfaces. We all know how well I count. <laughs> that, play, no, that was that was cool. Play it, play it again. All right, and I, I I do now that I'm hearing them intercut right on top of each other. Now I'm starting to hear some subtle differences from one to the next. Companies can no longer afford to be reactive. Across all industries, organizations rely on the uptime of their equipment to be as productive and reliable as possible. As systems age, predictive maintenance efforts need to be kept up to date. Today, new technologies have become available, allowing organizations to become more proactive than ever before in their reliability journeys. Companies can no... I was doing a hand gesture to yeah, yeah, yeah. kind well, of... Nobody sees that. Better, worse, you know, uh, the, going back and forth. The last phrase was definitely different from the rest. And, and I will say that was the ID14. That was the last. There is something, it has this thickness to it, almost mm -hmm. like compression. Fascinating. That yeah. was really interesting. It definitely sounded different from the others. Yeah. I'm not going to say it's good or bad. It's just different. It just has a different sound. Right. So what is it that makes the difference between these interfaces you know i'm 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 not an electrician i am not a, an electronic genius i didn't go to virginia tech uh but uh well what 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 is it that makes what is the difference between say this guy and and this guy i mean what is it that they do that would make those differences well <laughs> I was supposed to be at Virginia Tech to study uh, electrical engineering and supposed to learn all about circuit design. Oh, sorry, didn't mean to. But about halfway through, <laughs> I lost my mind, couldn't stand it, and went to music. But I did train my ear and listen to a lot of stuff. I um, So, yeah, I mean, I mentioned it a little earlier. The differences are the chips inside and what they choose to use for preamps and for the AD converters. And if you do a little Googling online for AD converter chips or whatever, you'll see there's probably only like two or three companies that actually make them. So there's very little variation that it's going to be out there between all these units, especially when you're comparing them at the lower price range. You know, Steinberg and Focusrite and Avid, all these $200 and less interfaces very likely are going to use the, the same parts because they are not going to spend tens of hundreds of thousands of dollars developing their own chip on, on a hundred dollar interface. So that's where things are going to be more similar. And then as you go up in price, it's more likely the company might actually develop some of their own componentry. But again, it's the AD converters are mostly going to be developed by one or two companies, maybe three. The preamps maybe are what vary the most. And so you do hear slightly different shades colors, shades of mauve from one to the next. Like in the middle, this one sample sounded a little bit slightly thinner and maybe band passed. So it didn't have as much low or high end. Another part had not as much high end. You know, you hear these little things, but you really can only tell when you intercut them like this. Right, exactly. Now, so the, the thing, the question I think this all begs is, is one of these interfaces going to cost you a job versus one that's going to get you a job? To me, the whole idea of this entire exercise was to say, I didn't think so. Uh, voice acting comes down to your ability to read your way out of a paper bag. And there are an awful lot of people out there that we know here in Los Angeles and some in New York that, you know, they're well-known voice actors and they'll be driving along and they might be pulling into a McDonald's or something. And if they are, then, you know, that's their problem. But, uh, and, they, and they'll check their email. Oh, I've got to do this audition. They will pull over to a corner, take out their iPhone, record an, an audition on their iPhone and send it out and then get back in the drive through line. And <laughs> they, they book work with this stuff. It's, yeah. you know, it's, you know, when you're producing, when you're doing a live remote with somebody or you are actually creating content for somebody, one, they don't want you futzing with it a whole lot. But they're far more, when it comes to auditions, they are far more looking to see your ability to interpret copy and sound like you're not reading it. And that's got nothing to do with the microphone. Uh, 
and and the environment and things like that. You don't what you don't want, and this is what George and I emphasize all the time is you don't want anything else to be a distraction from your actual voice, which is why you don't want to add a lot of processing to it. You don't want to, you know, use noise gating and all these other things. You want to have the right environment. So your job is to use that computer the way it should be, which is like a cassette recorder. Hit record, do your thing, hit stop, and edit, but not have to do a lot of processing. Now, so. Yeah, I, um, you know, I want to be clear, you know, the context of this whole thing is for voice actors, right? Some of you guys are going to see this and you're going to be engineers. You're going to have really good ears and you might give us a hard time saying it does matter. Quality matters. You know, this is a race to the bottom. You know what? If that's your job as an engineer to have the best gear in the business because you're selling your time as an engineer, you're selling your studio. Okay, fine. You know, that's that people pay you to have those ears and pay you to have the best equipment. That's a whole different situation. So yeah. don't get me confused. The context of this is really which interfaces work best for voiceover. And clearly from this test, they all work fine. <laughs> they all do the job. And we're talking 10 plus years of time span between all of them. And they all right. still sound pretty good. So, you know, they're just different I design philosophies, different features, different manufacturers, you know, involved. And man, there's another 20 of these things out there that we didn't test. Oh, and it's because yeah. we just don't have them slash we don't have the time. Right. right. Um, but this is, I think, enough of a pool that I think we've proven our point. It, they all sound so similar that it just doesn't really matter. Right. Now, we know you guys are going to go, oh, no, I heard that difference. And you're going to want, send us the files. Uh -uh. They are going into the VOBS vault and staying there. And I'm throwing away the key. So uh... <laughs> don't bug us. Don't bug us. All right. Well, that's the Mike Shootout. We'll be right back to uh, wrap all this up with a few final comments right after these messages. This is Anthony Mendez. And you're watching Voice Over Body Show. From voiceoveressentials.com, it's the relationship savior, the multicolor LED VO recording sign. Not just a stock on the air or recording sign, it's our exclusive voiceover recording sign. This brilliantly lit LED 20 color beacon tells everybody at home, which is currently everybody, hey, I'm auditioning, recording, podcasting, narrating, or broadcasting here, and a few moments of relative quiet would be very much appreciated. What's more, the wafer-thin remote control lets you choose a multitude of options, from color to brightness, flashing to fade in and out. You can even set up your own personal codes. Red means I'm recording. Blue, playing back. Green, it's a wrap. Plug in the seven-foot-long cord and hang it on a doorknob or wall hook using the included chain. For voice workers, silence really is golden. And gold is one of the 20 colors you can choose from. Order yours now for just $69.95 from voiceoveressentials.com. That's voiceoveressentials.com. Ooh, I think I heard the voice of a body shop. I did. I did hear the voice of a body shop. Beat old body shop. As a voice talent, you have to have a website. But what a hassle getting someone to do it for you. And when they finally do, they break or don't look right on mobile devices. They're not built for marketing and SEO. They're expensive. You have limited or no control, and it takes forever to get one built and go live. So what's the best way to get you online in no time? Go to voiceactorwebsites.com. Like our name implies, voiceactorwebsites.com just does websites for voice actors. We believe in creating fast, mobile-friendly, responsive, highly functional designs that are easy to read and easy to use. You have full control. No need to hire someone every time you want to make a change. And our upfront pricing means you know exactly what your costs are ahead of time. You can get your voiceover website going for as little as $700. So if you want your voice actor website without the hassle of complexity and dealing with too many options, go to voiceactorwebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. 
VoiceOver Extra, the voiceover industry's online news, education, and resource center 24-7. Hundreds, probably thousands of free how-to articles for voiceover success, ranging from home studio to voice acting to business. A free voiceover industry directory, calendar of industry events, resource links, a store, and much more. Bi-monthly webinars on all topics of voiceover, free subscriptions to newsletters, reports, announcements, daily news, and features at voiceoverextra.com. And we're back to wrap things up here on VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk. That was fascinating just to listen to them, you know. And the interesting thing is, is, you know, I'm listening to it on my equipment. I got a pair of Yamaha H5s. I've got my Harlan Hogan Signature Series headphones. And interestingly, playing it back through your system, it sounded just a little bit different. Mm -hmm. But they all sounded clean and crisp. So... It's you have to know your monitoring, whatever that monitoring is, you need to be very, very familiar with it. So it's whatever you pay for your speakers or your headphones or whatever it is, whatever, however, the, it's how familiar, familiar are you with them? And I've been using this one and then the pirate pair that I bought before them for over 20 years. I yeah. just know the way they sound. So you know, I'm listening to on a consistent basis and I'm listening to this in comparison to thousands of other files. So that's my frame of reference. I'm not using studio monitors. I have a pair of massive Mackie HR 824s right next to me, giant behemoth speakers. <laughs> now I'm not using them for this kind of critical listening. No, you got to really, it, it does take headphones to listen to those and, and for editing and stuff. But in a good small home studio, it's good to have a good pair of studio monitors. So I, I think maybe I just need to adjust the trims on these a little bit because everything sounds a little bit muddy to me. But then again, so does my wife on occasion. So, uh, and apparently the dog too. Come here, Ari. What? <laughs> whatever, whatever. Uh, anyway, next week on this very show, we return uh, live next Monday night with Carolyn Casey. And she, you know, you know her. You've talked with her. She's a produce, a commercial producer, and and what are some of the other things she many does? year, yeah, many year veteran. I believe she said thirty year, thirty years of uh, voice production or producing, but also she is a voice actor. So kind of interesting. She's going to have perspectives on both sides of the glass, as we say. So that's going to be really interesting. All right. That's next Monday night here on VoiceOver Body Shop. Thanks to all our donors who continue to contribute. If you need to donate to us, you do, which by the way, you do. Uh, on our homepage, VOBS.TV, you can click on Donate Now and uh, you know, give us a buck, give us 20 bucks, give us 500. We, it doesn't matter. It all helps. It keeps the technology flowing here and keeps the show uh, on track every week. We try to give you guys fresh content every single week so uh make sure you're here every week you know we also like to thank our sponsors uh you know let's see if we can remember them without the script in front of us uh like harlan hogan's voiceover essentials uh i'm like a voice actor if i don't have it in front of me i can't remember. okay all right so i'll go with voiceover heroes voice actor websites.com jmc demos uh voiceover x source elements voiceover extra voiceover extra and i think that's all i think that's all of them thanks guys we can't do it without you guys either and we really appreciate it well i hope we proved something tonight i know i think we did uh but we'd love your comments on this and uh, as you're watching this on facebook give us your thoughts on it we want to hear what you have to say so that's going to do it for us this week, next week with Carolyn Casey and more tech talk coming up over the next couple of weeks. So uh, eventually they're going to get let, let us out of our houses. So, you know, we've got to, we're getting our hazmat suits out. We're going to get in there, but that's going to do it for us. Thanks for listening and for watching. Uh, I'm Dan Leonard and I'm George Whittem. And this is voiceover body shop or V O B S tech talk, tech talk.